All right, today we're just gonna go over lower back pain. Um, there are a handful of culprits that tend to be mentioned when it comes to lower back pain. One of the obvious ones, weak glutes or underactive glutes. Uh, if the glutes are weak, you have an inability to kind of squeeze and get the hips into a neutral position. Kind of going hand in hand with that would be tight hip flexors pulling you into this anterior pelvic tilt. So if the muscles on the front side of the body are a little bit short, they're gonna be yanking the hips and tilting them forward, overstressing that lower back. One of the things that tends to get overlooked is actually the medial chain of your legs. So we talk a lot about the hip flexors and quads, glutes and hamstrings, anterior and posterior chains. So we're gonna talk about the medial chain today. So if you've tried to clear lower back pain, kind of by doing the things I already mentioned, kind of stretching out and loosening and lengthening the hip flexors and getting the glutes stronger, but you're still dealing with a little bit of lower back pain, you might want to look at the adductors. So those are the muscles that squeeze the legs together. Um, adductors, like many muscles in the body when they're referred to, it's actually, adductors are just the joint action or the action that the muscles do, not necessarily the individual muscles. So like the hip flexors, those aren't muscles, you have a psoas and iliacus. Same thing with the adductors, three of the five primary adductors are also hip flexors, meaning that they pull your hip into flexion. So, you might clear what is commonly thought of as the hip flexors, the iliacus and the psoas. So if you can lengthen those, but you're still sort of being pulled into that anterior pelvic tilt, it's, it might not be the muscles that are traditionally thought of as hip flexors, it might be uh, some of the adductors, which is that medial chain. Think of like the, the high groin muscles. Uh, three of those five muscles, not only do they pull the legs or squeeze the legs together, they're also hip flexors. So if those are tight and short, they're gonna be pulling you into an anterior pelvic tilt. And until you clear those, you're not gonna be able to clear that lower back pain. Okay, so first thing we're gonna get into is a little banded distraction. Uh, you're gonna need a low anchor point and a pretty hefty band possibly a second band just for support and balance if you need that. So what you'll do is step inside the band, band comes up to the sort of that high hamstring insertion into the glute, step yourself back till you're loaded, and then you're gonna drop down into basically what looks like a Cossack squat. So you're also gonna work on the ankle range of motion on this side. Main thing is working on the medial chain of the leg that's banded. Uh, second band here, just to load up a little bit more, you just have it for support. If you have pretty good ankle range of motion and you're, you can get pretty low, you might not need this. But for most people, you'll probably want the extra band for support. So the starting position, start with the foot dropped out and then flex the quads and turn the toe up towards the ceiling and then floss back down. Let the band pull posterior to anterior, which is just fancy talk for pulling that way. You're pulling the hip capsule into a bit of a better position to mobilize here. So you want that distraction pulling towards the anchor point and then just keep flossing back and forth. Make sure the quad stays engaged so you're not losing anything through the knee and your knee isn't just getting yanked to the inside. So quads stay on the whole time. Floss the toe up towards the ceiling, still engaged in the quad, floss forward, and just keep working yourself back and forth. I'll do two to three minutes on each side, just trying to clear this chain. This is the first exercise I would do. Next one, we're gonna be down on the floor. You'll need some sort of weight. I just have a big sandbag. You can use a plate or just a friend to push down. Either way, start yourself in sort of a butterfly position. Lying on your back. I'm working on the left side. I load the weight onto my left leg. It's just gonna block me into place. Keep the butt squeezed the whole time. And then let the opposite leg drop down. Relieve that pressure by coming back up to a neutral starting position. Re-engage the glutes and drop the outside leg down. That's gonna help you tension up and create more torque through the system. You'll get a better stretch on the chain on this side. You're also working on the hip capsule mobilization or mobility on that left side that we're loaded on. Come back to the top, release. Re-engage the glute each time. Drop that knee down and come back up. Again, I do about two minutes on each side there. 
The most important thing there, keep the glutes engaged the entire time. If the glutes aren't engaged, you're gonna get, it's like sort of false range, range that you don't really have. So keep the glute engaged, challenge that position. The weight is gonna block your loaded leg down, and then you'll use the other leg dropping it down towards the floor, and that's where you'll get the stretch and feel it through that hip capsule and the medial chain. Last one. So we're going back to our heavy band. This time you're gonna be facing away from the anchor point. The band's gonna be right in the hip crease. Walk yourself out so you're under tension. Take a wide straddle stance. Make sure both toes are parallel and pointing forward the whole time. Let the band yank you back. And then you sort of hunt around down here, trying to find spots that are a little bit tight. So normally, if you do this without a band, you're gonna be worried about falling forward. The band is just gonna help keep you a little bit more upright and stable as you can hunt around and try to find those tight spots in the hips and that medial chain, that high groin piece of musculature that could be a little bit tight, yanking your hips forward and pulling on your lower back. So use the band, hunt around, try to get nice and wide with that stance. Again, about two minutes, just sort of freestyling down here. That's gonna be the last piece. Once you've cleared those first two pieces, get in that band, hunt around, try to find those spots a little bit tight. If something feels tight and just kind of knotted up, spend more time there. If a, spot, if a position feels good, you kind of clear that, check it off the board, and then just move on to the next one. So try those three mobilizations, see if they help, see if they help open up that medial chain. Hopefully it'll help get your hips into a better position, which should relieve some tension from your lower back.